the U.S. recognizes Israel annexation of the Golan Heights. And let me tell you, it's a big deal, isn't it, Barry? It's an enormous deal, Jermaine. Uh, I would say to your audience, unless you've been in those mountains and looked north into Syria and south into Israel, you really can't grasp the importance of this territory uh, strategically for defense purposes. Um, up till 1949, 48, when there were no real countries, it was all sort of under the British mandate, uh, there were no defined borders and people came back and forth and there were no armies and nobody was being killed. Um, after Israel was established in 1948 until 1967 when Israel liberated the Golan Heights in the 1967 war from Syria, the Syrian army used to have tanks and mortars and artillery up on the Golan Heights and they would lob shells down into the whole valley below into the Sea of Galilee and all the farmers would get blown off their tractors and kids would get killed in their schools and so on. And everybody in northern Israel, anywhere near that area, had a bomb shelter to run to 24-7. It was a horrible existence and it, it frankly amazes me, Germain, that people would live under constant threat of mortars and grenades and rifle fire and artillery shells and tank shells. And so in 1967, when Israel pushed Syria out of the southern Golan Heights, guess what? The shooting stopped. And nobody died anymore and never has since in the 50 plus years that Israel has been in charge of the Golan Heights. So the recognition of what reality already has existed since 1967, which is Israel's not going to give it back, they're going to keep it, and it's keeping their citizens safe, by President Trump stepping up and saying, hey, we're going to change our maps. We're going to show the world that this is Israeli territory and why that's important uh, is a big deal for Israel, because this is very strategic territory. You just alluded to the history of Israel and I want to go ahead and piggyback on that with showing the uh, audience here this article let me go ahead and transition as you guys can see here this article comes from AISH.com H.com and it, it speaks about the Golan is the site of the Torah you know, the most vivid historical site of a lot of things, especially the Jewish, uh, one of the first Jewish tribes that settled there. It's a very, very historical site. And people have to understand that this site is going to be fought over because of its historical meaning and also it being, um, you know, a religious uh, meaning as well. Um, wouldn't you agree of, of that, uh, Barry? Oh, absolutely, Germain. It was in Jewish hands for 3,000 years. The amount of biblical history in the Golan is just astounding. Uh, several of the tri uh, 12 tribes were there. Um, stories in the Bible are written about things that went down on the Golan. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're there and you get a really good tour, you find old synagogues from 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, from before Islam even was a religion. So the Israeli claim to the Golan Heights is not only strategic, but it's religiously historical. Syria had it for uh, under 20 years, Israel has had it for over 3,000 years. So it's not like Israel's going to evacuate because it's Syrian territory. No, Syria took it away from what could have been part of Israel uh, during the War of Independence. And the more they explore up there, the more biblical history there is that says this is and has always been Jewish territory. Mm -mm -mm. And I also want to go ahead um, and inform the uh, audience here that the Golan Heights creates and maintains a permanent land and buffer zone against the terrorist strikes, right? The missile launches, tank invasions. Now, I want to go ahead and show the audience 
a tank trap on the Syrian border. I believe uh, you sent me this video. I, I want the audience to really get a feel of what's going on here. Standing down the hill As you guys can we see there, uh, along with Barry, you guys can see the pitch. trench That's there, the little crossings. tank trap. We are and you can see the, the actual tracks as well. The building right there is occupied and manned right now by various rebel You can forces. see along the fence. And literally 300 yards from them. And that is the barrier between Israel and Syria. It could not be closer. All the way down. Stay here very long. Just and then I also want to go ahead and show the crowd, the tank ditch at the Syrian border. So that was a tank trap. Now the here's the ditch. ditch. Just about a mile and a half from the border that's intended to be a trap for Syrian tanks if they close the border. As you guys can see, it's pretty deep. I'm gonna ask you to um, go ahead and explain this a little bit here. Um, what the crowd just seen and how important it is to have this barrier there. Yeah, I shot that video, Jermaine, uh, when I was in Israel uh, last year, and we did about uh, 25, 28 episodes there. I'm actually there at the top of the Golan Heights on the Israeli-Syrian border. And what Israel has done in a lot of places is dug these deep ditches. This is where Syrian tanks, over a thousand of them, invaded in 1973. And so what Israel is trying to do is preempt another Syrian invasion. If you can't get the tanks across, the border into the Golan from the Syrian side, it makes an invasion much less likely. So you can see how they're protecting against what happened. And I was right up to the fence. I mean, I could have thrown a rock into Syria. And if anyone happened to be driving by with a rifle, I was clearly in, in range of easily being shot. Oh yeah. And you know, <laughs> um, I wanna go ahead and also show the crowd here we have um, the Gaza fields and the tunnels here above the tunnels. I want to go ahead and show them that as well as long uh, along with the Syrian border where uh, the terrorist motorcycle was here. I a half it's a mile a south. Very good video. To this is the on. brand new Israeli fence on the Syrian border. I'm standing behind a tank embankment. I'm looking at this is all Syria that I'm looking at. About uh, 15 minutes ago, we saw a motorcycle zooming the into the no man's land. And those are Al Qaeda fighters. And across about three, 400 meters is the Syrian army. Was trying to kill the guy in the motorcycle. All right, Barry. So the crowd just got done <laughs> seeing. The, uh, the barriers there, the tank, the wall, the fence. Now, Barry, I have a question for you. Is there any other way to restrain um, these forces such as Hezbollah in Iran? Yeah, the, the problem you've got in the Golan, Germain, uh, is that Syria is no longer a functioning country for all intents and purposes. Different parts of that territory can controlled by different groups. Bashar al-Assad, the brutal dictator for life, has killed, some estimates say, hundreds of thousands, maybe up to a million of his own people during the civil war. I don't mean combatants, I mean men, women, and children from gas bombs and uh, carpet bombing and strafing. I, it's been horrible, chemical, chemical weapons attacks especially. So he controls part of the country and he hates Israel. Uh, group number two there is Hezbollah, who has outposts all over the territory. And they, under the leadership of Hassan Nasrallah, has said many times his entire goal in life is killing every Jew in Israel. So they have territory that's separate from the Syrian government. Then you've got the Russians controlling certain amounts of territory. The Russians, ironically, do talk to the Israelis, especially uh, their Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and they seem to have a fairly good working relationship. But Russia doesn't want to leave because they want control over Syrian territory. Meanwhile, if 
the government of Syria ever restabilizes and harnesses Hezbollah. Hezbollah has said repeatedly their intention is to kill everybody that's Jewish in Israel. And so Israel is preparing for that uh, as best they can. And at times they cross the border and blow up the manufacturing plants that are building missiles and chemical weapons.